as we say in the um, book of Genesis, it's important to keep in mind that Moses, when he wrote the book of Genesis, he didn't keep an exact um, detailed account of every story in the book of Genesis. He was mainly focused on um, keeping an account of the origin of the book of Genesis. So we are going to be cross referencing throughout the Bible to get a picture of the story. We're going to be looking at creation, man, sin, how man dealt with sin, marriage, sandwich, judgment, and Israel. We're going to be looking at creation, sin, and the family more particularly. It's important that when we look at these things, we're going to be looking at more focused, or more um, at a wide lens view at the fall, the flood, and the fallout as a result of it all. As we examine the lives of the women of Genesis, we're going to be focusing on a couple of women in particular. We're going to be looking at Eve. We're going to be looking at Noah's wife, Sarah, Hagar, um, Lot's wife, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah, Diana, <coughs> Tamar, and Potiphar's wife. These women are a lot like us. You're going to look at them. You're going to cheer with them. And you're also going to weep. There are women that have had life struggles, ups and downs. You're going to have um, sorrows that some of you are going to be able to relate to. In fact, God may be doing a divine stirring in some of your hearts. And it's important that when you do this Bible study, that you look at it from the scripture as coming alive with your story. I invite you to look at the story of each of these women and trace the hand of God as you see and look at your life story. Because God is woven in through each story, but it's also the hand of Jesus in his world. They are not silent, they are not forgotten, they are not forsaken or in the background, nor are these women created to be not loved or cherished like each one of you. They are women that were in a love relationship with the living God, and as well as the people who are around. As you look and follow their lives, Look, you'll see promises made, covenants given, and promises kept. This is the same God who invites you into that same promises given, covenants kept, and promises given. The abundant life does not just add years to your life, but adds life to your years. That is what the author so poignantly wrote in your Bible study. I'm going to be handing out the Bible studies to you um, in your small group, so um, you can take it up front close or look at it. But this is just giving it to you at 30,000 feet right now today. It is because a life, a life, excuse me, a life well lived is lived in the Word of God. It is a life breathing book that is alive and sharper than a two headed sword. And it's meant to be lived, it's meant to be your life lived in. So I invite you to go deeper in the Bible study to look at what your life means, to replace your name with these individuals that you need. I want to share a story about a mentor of mine in my life. It starts, she started in my life at the age of 14. She was a life to well lived. Maybe some of you can relate to her story a little bit. Her name was Donnie Stevens. I had her in my life for almost 30 years. I met her in intercessory prayer. She was a prayer warrior. And um, at the age of 14, I sat with these women, and I was the youngest amongst women, and their average age was between 60 and 70 years of age. And they would sit, and they would be flipping the Word of God back and forth. The Bible's flipping. What are they doing? Flipping the Bible in a small group. So I went home at the age of 14, and I started flipping the Bible. Convinced <laughs> that when I went back, I'd be able to flip just as fast as they were. And um, when I got back, to my surprise, what they were doing was they had gotten to know the Lord so well, it had been sown in their hearts so deeply that they were praying back the Word of God. The Word is written on our hearts and it's forth like food on our lips. And when we pray forth the Word of God, it is like power. It comes back as we cannot be turned away. That's what Dottie sewed into my heart. She also sewed in something else. She sewed in the One Year Bible. And it is a Bible that is, in addition to Bible study, it is the 66 books of the Bible divided into the Old Testament, New Testament, a little bit of Psalms and Proverbs, broken down, meant to be read, 
from December to January in 14 minutes a day. And for the last 30 years, I've been reading the One Year Bible. And there's been years when I haven't been able to get a One Year Bible because I haven't had the funds to get another One Year Bible. And um, so I would there be a promise that God would give me this word would be illuminated. And when I had to make a decision in life, whether it was regarding my daughter in school, uh, should I move her to another school or um, should we move literally from California to Tennessee? Should I change careers or jobs locations? Uh, I had a time once when a job opportunity opened up on a machine that never slept, was always on a plane, train, or automobile in corporate America. I was a road warrior for corporate America, but also one for Jesus. I carried my Bible and watch out if you were on the plane with me. I would look at you and say, you know the Lord? You know? <laughs> I carried my bag and said, Tracy Lee was ambassador for Jesus. <laughs> and, um, but literally, they said, you need to move to Atlanta. I said, oh, Atlanta, beautiful country. But my family, my mom is here with me, all lived in California. And they helped, as a single mom, take care of my daughter. I said, Lord, why do I do? This is a wonderful opportunity. It seemed like an no-brainer. You can't leave your family. This is, it takes a village to raise a child. But no, this was an opportunity of a lifetime. It was providing for my daughter at the same time. The word of God leaped these pages and gave me the words that I needed to speak to that employer in order to form the offer that I needed to come back with that job. It was literally from the word of God. Decisions that need to be made in life, whether it's raising your child, whether it's um, whether you go to the left or the right, you hear the words of the Lord, this is the way walking in it came from God's word. No other person, no other um, place or thing, no other roadside or a license plate saying go to this place. No, it was God's word leading the way. Um, after I finish our introduction, I'm going to do a drawing. We asked who, if you're here today for one year Bible. That's how um, strongly I feel how the word of God fashions and changes your heart. Bible study. Being in it, being constantly in the word of God and allowing God to penetrate your heart and then coincide with the one you you would be amazed at how the Lord and his precious Holy Spirit work in such a way that you'll see mountains move, you'll see hearts change within your own family, and you'll see it's not God who moves, it's God who moves in you. So the One Year Bible is a wonderful resource that God has uh, sowed into my life. And she also fashioned just um, how just speaking the word, teaching the word of God as she was a leader. And, um, and then she became later on an author. And as a widow, she became a widow at a very young age. She felt the Lord was just calling her to serve and be used in any way that he would call her. And um, at the age of 86, she went to Liberia. And it was one of the largest African nations that had suffered so much because of the war. And so she went to Liberia and she would come back and give a brief report of meeting over 300 women um, that had um, suffered and lost their husbands as a result of the war. So when she was there, she said, How many of you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And she explained what that was to accept Jesus as their come alongside her, their great husband, their friend that would never leave them or forsake them, would be with them always. And as she started to explain what it meant to have Christ as the one and only and the Savior and Lord, over 300 women, all 300 women, raised their hands simultaneously mm -hmm. to receive Christ. She turned to her friends later and said, Do they know what they're doing? And he said, I think so. <laughs> and so she said, Ask them again. And so she said mm -hmm. again, and 300 women raised their hands. And she went to do that three other times, three other times it was So she walked away from Liberia with a good report that um, her book on widowhood, Transforming uh, Corner, um, was the fruit that God wanted her to write, and that God has more for your life, even when you think it's over. And it wasn't just about the widows, but it was also for women who maybe were married and were living in one this widow, and not whole view of what God had for them in the marriage. So after the development introduction, I have we asked you if you were a widow or were a widow, if um, uh, part of the joys I'm going to give away, I'll be to you. 
but she was alive well lived. At the age of 87, she went home to be with the Lord. But years were added to her life, not just here on earth, but she had imparted nothing into my life and the life of others. But I like to think of the fruit that's um, just blooming on the other side of the wall and then and, um, and continues on as a result. And I know that I will see her again. But it is also in knowing that our the author invites us to live the abundant life, no matter what age you are, whether you're 14 or whether you're 87, that life is meant to be lived in full view of God's plan for your life. She invites you to open up your lesson every day to look up, look at, learn about, look at, and listen to. Those are the five ways your lessons broken up every single day. Um, it's um, broken up daily, meant to be taken maybe about an hour a day. Um, some of you may take a little longer, just depending on how deep you want to go with the Lord. It is designed for you to take that one hour, or you can take five hours. It is up to you. It is how you want to go and how deep you want to go. Um, let's dig a little deeper in how that is, um, how that will look up, lift up, look out, learn about, live out, and listen to books. When you look at um, the book, um, this um, Bible study, and this is what it looks like, ladies. I know I have it in the back, but you'll be getting it in your hands to take a look at. The section that I'm going to be talking about and what the expectation is, is that the author invites you to lift up your time in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to be your divine teacher. And there is no greater teacher. And Jesus said, I'm going to leave you with a comforter. And that comforter is going to teach you all things. And so shall he teach you all things when you ask him to. And when you open up your Bible study and you pray to pray. So pray, ask the Lord to um, teach you, ask his Holy Spirit to invite him to teach you. And keep that time just holy and set apart with the Lord and ask for no distractions. I cannot tell you how many times. I would go and open up my time to Bible study. It didn't matter if my daughter was now 30, but then I started Bible study. Um, I was young. I was a teenager. The distraction was myself making the time to actually get into the Word of God. Later on, as I got older, it would be work, and it would be the phone ringing. But then they had pagers. Pagers would be off. <laughs> that dates. But then it would be now the phone going off. And then later on, as a young mother, didn't matter if my daughter Jordan, and if you have children, she's in childcare. She teaches, uh, she has childcare. She's uh, teaching your children. I want to be mindful of the time. But um, she would be the child. I'll give you a story about her. So if you know her, this is a little tidbit about her. We would wrestle. She would tell me it would be um, uh, early in the morning, and I would want to do my Bible study, and I would want to get her off to school. And she would say, no, I told you I am not a morning person. And I said, well, welcome to the movie. It starts early. <laughs> not in my Bible study. She said, I'm a movie now. And I said, but you have early morning kindergarten. <laughs> so you have to go to sleep. So we would have this tug of war in the morning. And we have so maybe you have some of those children, regardless of their age, whether it be that they're little or they're in high school, or maybe it's just work. But lift up your time in prayer. Look at look at the scriptures and as you open the Bible inductively, ask and be a detective on the who, what, when, where, and how. That's how these studies are broken up. And as you look at those um, uh, scriptures and you fit that section, do so with those questions in mind. That's the author's approach to this lesson. Um, secondly, um, she asks you to live out this scripture, make it personal, make it intimate, make it uh, practical. In what your needs are as an individual woman. She asks you to journal um, in here. And if you're a journaler, I am, some of you aren't, this may be a new practice for you the Bible study. Um, we've given you a book as you leave today. You were meant to be draw, um, dividing these up into your groups. I'll try to walk around and give them. If I don't, then pick one up on the time. The way you go out, we created a folder for you. And um, in the folder, it's just simple um, notebook 
binder. Maybe you did some for your kids if you don't. It's just um, simple paper for your journaling along with your um, study. So um, if you have a formal um, journal, feel free to use it. This is just something we're providing as a resource for you to journal along with your um, Bible study. Make the word of God is personal. It is absolutely your story and God's story. Uh, today, um, at the end uh, of my introduction, I'm going to be giving, uh, doing a drawing for a Bible that is also a uh, journal Bible. So um, designed to be your story and God's story. So one step closer um, to you making that um, this Bible more relatable to you, more personally, and I hope that this gift from um, this Bible study to you is a blessing. Um, the other um, part of this that is broken up is to listen to. There's a quote at the end of each um, day, and it's based from an author, a person of wisdom, and it invites you to just ponder and deeply consider what that person may be saying about um, that part of the study. So it um, continually um, asks you to reflect upon these things. Um, there are three other sections and expectations um, for you to consider when you're looking at this Bible study. And many of us come with expectations when we come to the Bible study and when we sign up for Bible study. I hope the greatest expectation you have is to get closer to Jesus, to get closer and deeper in the Word of God and more in love um, with the Lord. But um, on a personal checklist, um, as you enter this Bible study, you should keep in mind in your heart um, the following things. Be determined to finish the study and check your study um, because sometimes it gets away with you. And I know each of you may have families and commitments. And um, I promise you, you will not be disappointed when you start. Be prepared to ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher and write down the thoughts that he speaks to your heart. Be inspired by what the Holy Spirit may speak to. I know mm -hmm. that when I ask the Holy Spirit to be my teacher and I open up the Bible study on these, and as he is your teacher, I remember a long time ago that same um, a mentor of mine says, Honey, if you don't remember what you said or where, how it was authored, then it was because it was done before it didn't come from you. So when you write it down, so well, wow, that was profound. How did I come up with that? <laughs> no, it wasn't you. Spirit. Be complete. Read the passion, passage and finish your lesson because the Lord wants to speak completely through the study. Be present. Answer the question fully as possible. If you can't really answer that question, move on and know that the answer may come in your small group time. And um, if there's something that you really don't know, don't be afraid to call your leader, your aunt facilitator. We may have that answer for you. Honestly, living out your question. Again, there may be a divine stirring that the word does in this because there are some deep women that are in this study that you have absolutely living practical problems and things that they have and that we have to write through. So we, um, we are dealing with first, Genesis is the book of first. And we deal with the first woman that had a broken marriage. Some of you may be dealing with broken marriages. We deal with the first known rape in the book of Genesis. I don't know if any of you have been through in that way or her, but that may be a divine story of you being through in some way, shape, or form. You may say, Tracy, I haven't been, but you know what? Maybe someone has ravaged your heart for life, and that's left with you to know. So be honest, be blessed, and enjoy your time in, um, and in God's word. In your small group, be prepared for things that you can expect in your circle and things to discuss. Um, keep um, your time prayerful. Your prayer time will be prayerful. It will be biblical and kept to the word of God. Be respectful and listen to one another. There will be people that will have questions and answers and things that you may not have thought about. And maybe it was the point, not only did I not consider that, but I don't know if I want to listen to that. Listen, let that heart be out. Um, there may be someone in there that just needs to speak out and just let people um, say their heart and speak their heart. So be respectful, listen, and um, 
without intervening, um, but um, let the Holy Spirit have his perfect way and know that you're uh, able to keep everyone on task. Be kind and loving and courteous, and be mindful and remembering that you treat other people, other group members, your other ladies in prayer. Um, some of you have great things that you're coming um, to this group time with. You have made things at work, you have your family, your children, you have your mama here. And um, so there are things that are first in this, in this Bible study as well. So maybe things that you're coming with, it may be, a, it may be hard to get through. My mom was having um, heart issues this whole morning, um, this whole day. So she was just wrestling to try to get through just because of her heart. So there have been things that, that you may have been wrestling with to try to get through. So be prayerful and, um, and just know that there are things that are distractions and things that just can be playing on your heart and not literally figuratively to get you through. Your small group leaders, some things that you can expect from them in your time together. Um, are being very prayerful, prayerful for you and for your time together. Um, they are being faithful to the lesson, ready, and being, as well as highlighting the lesson so that they can be on task and looking for things that um, would be meaningful to point out as they are prayerful in their prayer time. So it is impossible to go through every single question every day for five days. So know that there will be highlighted questions that will be going in. So you may have a question in your heart, and there might be something that is weighing heavy on you. If it is so heavy on your heart, if something is so deep that you want to discuss, text or email or contact your group leader. It may be something that the spirit is moving in, and they haven't really highlighted it. But if it's something that you so want to go contact them because they're being careful about that. They want to be prompt to begin and end on time because they do have children that are in child care. Be sensitive. They want to be sensitive to your questions and group them and share them. They also know that they don't have all the answers. They are like you. They're coming here. They are gray women who have answered yes to Jesus to come and serve and love you and pray for you. But we are so blessed here at TOC that we have counselors, also have pastors with a lot of wisdom. So if you feel that you are going through your study and there are things that are, gosh, you really need to talk more about as you're doing your Bible study, we do have those resources and we do have this available ready for you to speak. They are flexible and, and when things may be made for you, and they want to be honest, honest with you and honest with your God. And they want to keep things in focus and they want to be patient and realize that they are people and they are people. Just like you, just like you with your uh, reading. And so we want to they know that they are vulnerable about those things. So they're calling me and we're reaching out. And when I don't have the answer, we're contacting our pastors as well. So just know that we're looking to get you the right answers and direct you in the way that the Lord uh, would lead you. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's what you're going to find as you read the word of God and look at these ladies. You're going to say, Oh my gosh, this is Genesis in the beginning. These women could be right now. That's because God's word is unchanging. In closing, let me invite you to um, consider something as you lift up, look at, uh, learn about, live out, and listen uh, to God's word in this Bible study. Maybe you'll find something very similar that I have found in my. Um, is it well it's over 35 years times. Um, that the more you study the Bible, the more you realize that it has been supernatural things. written in 66 books by 40 different authors over a period of 1600 years in over three languages. There is not one contradiction. Instead, that there is a unified theme that begins in Genesis, the book of beginnings, extends to Revelation, and that theme is the story of God's gracious and glorious work of redemption. May you grow more in love with the God of the Bible, the Son of Jesus, and the Lord. May you follow even in our first lesson that scarlet through heaven, through the first Adam, all the way through that gracious redemption all the way to the second to the cross as we follow our lessons and watch the people 
and see them. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you are a God that sees, that knows, that hears, and that understands all that we have. As we look at this um, study, Father God, may we get excited for what you can show us, how you will ignite every single one of our senses, and as you will speak to our hearts and penetrate our soul because you are the lover of our souls. And Father, how you lead us right where we're at, and you will speak to us, Father, because we desire to meet with you. May you be no one hungry at your table. May you be no one wanting and needy without more for you. May they open their lesson, Father God, and hear from you. May they see you, Jesus, and may they learn. And may they leave this place, Father, with having more of you as a result. May we bless their time for a small group. May they be knitted heart to heart. If you're here to find a friend, may they find that friend. But may they intimately find their very best friend for a lifetime, you, Jesus. If they've come here with a hurting heart, may you heal that hurting heart. If they have a hurting body, may you heal that hurting <clears throat> If they have a soul so deeply wounded because of being in another Bible study with the church where they've been wounded, Father, may you be that healing balm of Gilead. May they be so ridiculously loved, Father God, because you are the greatest love of all times. I ask, Lord, that, you, that they would know what the true agape love of Jesus is. And may they live relationally, Father, because that relationally relationship starts with a love affair with you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do a drawing.